I visited the state institutions for the mentally retarded, and I think uh, particularly at Willowbrook that we have a situation that borders on uh, a snake pit, and that the children live in Bill, uh, that uh, many of our fellow citizens are suffering tremendously because of lack of attention, lack of, lack of imagination, lack of uh, adequate manpower. There's very little future for the children or for those who are in these institutions. Uh, both need uh, a tremendous overhauling. I'm not saying that those who are the attendants there or the ones that run the institution are at fault. I think all of us are at fault. And uh, I think it's just uh, it's long overdue that something be done about it. It's been more than six years since Robert Kennedy walked out of one of the wards here at Willowbrook and told newsmen of the horror he'd seen inside. He pleaded then for an overhaul of a system that allowed retarded children to live in a snake pit. But that was way back in 1965 and somehow we'd all forgotten. I first heard of this big place with the pretty sounding name because of a call I received from a member of the Willowbrook staff, a Dr. Michael Wilkins. The doctor told me he'd just been fired because he'd been urging parents with children in one of the buildings, building number six, to organize so they could more effectively demand improved conditions for their children. The doctor invited me to see the conditions he was talking about, so unannounced and unexpected by the school administration, we toured building number six. The doctor had warned me that it would be bad. It was horrible. There was one attendant for perhaps 50 severely and profoundly retarded children, and the children, lying on the floor naked and smeared with their own feces, they were making a pitiful sound, a kind of mournful wail that it's impossible for me to forget. This is what it looked like, this is what it sounded like, but how can I tell you about the way it smelled? It smelled of filth, it smelled of disease, and it smelled of death. We've just seen something that's probably the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. Is that typical of ward life? Uh, yes, there are 5,300 patients at Willowbrook, which is the largest institution for the mentally retarded in the world. Uh, the ones that we saw were the most uh, severely and profoundly retarded. There are thousands there like that, uh, not going to school, sitting on the ward all day, not being talked to by anyone, only one or two or three people to take care of 70 people on the ward, sharing the same toilet, contracting the same diseases together. 100% uh, of patients at Willowbrook uh, contract hepatitis within six uh, months of being in the institution. Most patients at some time in their life have uh, parasites. The incidence of uh, pneumonias and, uh, is greater than any uh, other group of people that I think exist in this country. Uh, Trauma is severe because these patients are left together on a ward, 70 retarded people, uh, basically unattended, uh, fighting for a small scrap of paper on the floor to play with, uh, fighting for the attention of the attendants who are overworked, trying to clean them, uh, feed them, clothe them, and if possible, pay a little attention to them and work with them and develop their intelligence. But what in fact happens is that they go downhill. Two days after our first unofficial visit, a camera crew was given an authorized tour of the facility. While unannounced, we'd found the children naked and basically unattended. They were shown kids who were fully clothed and generously attended. It was to ensure that this sudden improvement in the quality of life was permanent that we returned without the knowledge of the school administration and through a back door. It was the first day all over again. To these people, life is just one hour after another. Of, kind of looking at the floor. There's no training on here. Can the children be trained? Yes, every child can be trained. You know, these kids, there's no effort. We don't know what these kids are capable of doing. Uh, some training programs go on at Willowbrook, but the state provides a bare minimum, just enough so that they can call this place a school. The state Clearly, these kids aren't getting any training. I mean, I don't think I have, even have to say that. They're just sitting here on the ward. Th these are the hours during which they should be in school, and they're not. What ward is this now? This is uh, Building 27. These patients do have clothes on today, but as you can see, the one thing that can't be hidden is that there are no training programs, that all these patients do is sit during the day. Uh, they're not kept uh, occupied. 
uh, their life is just uh, hours and hours of endless nothing to do, no one to talk to, no expectations, just a, a, an endless life of misery and, and filth. What you see, it uh, makes you think that it's hopeless that they can't be trained, but you know, they, they only look this way because they haven't have ever had opportunity for training. They, uh, you know, if you or I were left to sit on a ward uh, surrounded by other mentally retarded people, we would probably begin looking like this too. The Willowbrook State School is this country's largest home for the mentally retarded. It's called a school, but that's more a statement of aspiration than of fact. Fewer than 20% of the 5,230 people who are kept here attend any kind of classes. When the state of New York entered a period of economic retrenchment two years ago, a hiring freeze was clamped on this and other institutions in the Department of Mental Hygiene. In the intervening months, Willowbrook lost 600 employees through attrition. For the budget for fiscal 71-72, the governor recommended a hold-the-line appropriation of $630 million for the Mental Hygiene Department. The legislature, seeking to trim the waste and fat from the budget, cut it down to about $600 million. Then the governor decided that even $600 million was too much and cut it even further, all the way down to $580 million. Willowbrook lost another 200 employees, and a situation that two years ago was bad became hopeless. The attendants tried to care for their wards, but were simply overwhelmed. The attendant-to-patient ratio, which should be about 4 to 1, dropped to 30 to 40 to 1 and the average feeding time per patient, which should be 20 or 30 minutes, went down to two and three minutes. Many of the profoundly retarded children aren't capable of, of feeding themselves. In my building, we had no staff to train them in a systematic way to use utensils to feed themselves. That can be done, but uh, what's necessary is to feed them. Uh, you take a bowl of, of uh, food that you've made into a mush-like substance with a big spoon and you ladle it out into their mouth in the buildings where the kids can't feed themselves. Uh, there are so few attendants that there's only an average, it's been timed, three minutes per child per feeding. How much time would be needed to do a job adequately? The same amount of time that your children and my children would want to have to eat breakfast. What's the consequence of three minutes per meal per child? The consequence is death from pneumonia. North of the city, on the way to Bear Mountain, is a lovely looking place called the Letchworth Village Rehabilitation Center. Set among the hills and woods of suburban Rockland County, a passerby could easily mistake the place for a country club or a college campus. But the early morning mist gave the place an eerie feeling, like a set from a horror movie. And once inside, that feeling became suddenly appropriate. Congressman Mario Biaggi had planned an official tour of the facility for 10 o'clock in the morning, but by this time, wary of what I felt were attempts on the part of the Department of Mental Hygiene to make the situation look better than it really was, my camera crew and I got there two hours before that. As the hour of the official tour approached, bundles of clothing were brought in for the children and a process of cleaning up was begun. Even so, none of these cosmetic changes could do much to improve the place. Who's in charge here, Jerry? This is Mrs. Nixon. I'm Congressman Biagi. How are you? Why are these, why are these uh, patients unclothed? We don't have enough clothing. We don't have the proper help to keep clothing on them. We have a few nudists that will not keep clothes on. They will pull them off. But most of all, we don't have the help to keep the kids properly dressed. You're talking about more money for the, for the institution. Well, that we could use because then we will have more help. How, un how understaffed are you? Very understaffed. There are days we have four or five attendants to take care of a hundred... ...condition in a very beautiful ground, very well-built buildings. Uh, where inside we have housed uh, the children of many of our citizens who are subjected to the what appears to be the worst possible conditions I've ever seen in my life. I've visited penal institutions all over the country. I've visited hospitals all over the country. I visited the, the worst brigs in the, in, the, uh, in the military. Nothing's like it. I've, I've nev never seen anything like it. About 25% of the funding for Letchworth Village comes from the federal government, and one of the requirements for continued eligibility is that there be 80 square feet of space per patient. Here they get only 35 square feet. 
In the face of this terrible overcrowding, there was a ward there that stood empty because they hadn't the funds to hire the 38 people it would take to staff it. How can this be? I mean... Well, we need 38 additional positions and we would be able to staff this area and reduce our overcrowding in overcrowded areas. That's a sin, my God, a sin. Well, we have submitted and we're expecting that we might be getting them and then we'll be able to reduce the overcrowding inside the areas. There's at least one more horrifying aspect of life at Letchworth. More than 300 able-bodied patients, both physically and mentally able to work outside the institution, are not being allowed to. They're being used to fill the places of the too few employees. They get paid $2 a week for their efforts, about what they'd make each hour on the outside. And there was another development on the day we visited Letchworth. It was eight days after our investigation had begun. Governor Rockefeller, amidst a growing public outcry over the conditions at Willowbrook, made an announcement. He was restoring the $20 million he had stricken from the budget of the Department of Mental Hygiene. Willowbrook, it was said, would be able to rehire 300 of the 900 employees it had lost since November 1970. Letchworth Village would be able to rehire about 200. But the additional employees, while perhaps slowing the downward course of these two institutions, would not be able to change the basic nature of the two places, mere depositories for the retarded. You think what we showed on television in the past week is an accurate reflection of the problem, of the situation? I think it focused and made vivid the problems at Willowbrook. You think it was an honest portrayal? I think it was an honest portrayal of the problems at their worst. Uh, I, it may not tell the whole story of, of Willowbrook, and it certainly doesn't tell the whole story of the retarded, but it does describe unmistakably the kind of problems that we've seen, and now, thanks to the, uh, to, to the coverage, many people have seen. If the public eye leaves Willowbrook and all of the other places, and we once again uh, find ourselves, we and the directly involved parents, trying to go it alone, then I think we struggle to maintain our few gains, and we struggle slowly to get ahead. And perhaps if you were to come back a year from now and look again, you might see that we'd made headway. I expect you would. But you won't see it all solved in two weeks. I wish you would go back in two weeks, and in two weeks, and in two weeks, uh, because I think they, that the, a, a window on these conditions and maybe even allowing to begin to see what not only what is, but what it could be, and even what it is already in some places. So to reinforce the sense of hopefulness and to reestablish in people's minds that we're talking about human beings with potential, I would hope that you would see continued change, and if you didn't see it, that you'd say so. Two weeks after that interview, I took Dr. Miller up on his invitation to revisit Willowbrook. I found no meaningful change in the quality of life for the 5,230 people who live here. The attendants are trying their best, but the staff is just too small to do anything more than just try and keep the place clean. When there's only one person to take care of 30 or 40, nothing good can possibly happen. No rehabilitation, no training, nothing. The attendants are as much the victim of the conditions here as the patients are. And this visit has ruined the prisons and the hospitals. The way we care for our mentally retarded is the last great disgrace. The story of Willowbrook and of Letchworth Village is a story of degradation. A real-life horror story of lack of attention, of filth, and of children living as animals live an uncivilized and human existence. But our intention is not just to horrify, but also to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be that way. This is Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. It houses the Regional Center for the Mentally Retarded. The director of the program is Dr. Richard Koch. Last month, at the invitation of several parents groups, he toured the Willowbrook facility. The conditions that I saw at Willowbrook uh, are somewhat like this. When you enter the building I entered, the smell is 
is so overwhelming, it's almost nauseating. I frankly don't understand how they have people who will work there, to be honest with you. And I think that's the first thing that hits you. Secondly, uh, you find uh, many patients in the same room, all milling about uh, with nothing to do. Now, I may have seen an unusual situation, but I don't believe so because I saw three different buildings. And uh, in those buildings, I did not see any kind of program. I saw men sitting around masturbating. I saw boys and girls lying on the floor, uh, some of them naked. Uh, in other words, it, it just was uh, without program. And I think that is the crucial thing. It's just simply too big. The important thing, though, about the Willowbrook situation, as I see it, is, is that the system is feeding on itself. In other words, there isn't any alternative for parents uh, that need help. The state is only reaching out its hand primarily with residential care in mind. And the, what parents want, by and large, are a rich variety of programs, primarily in the community. And the reason we've been able to get an expansion of our program in California, even with Mr. Reagan as governor, uh, is because this program is showing that it has cut the rate of institutionalized retarded persons in California to practically almost in half in just five years. Public pressure can apparently force change in California as well as it does here in New York. They had a system that resembled ours until 1965. That was when a prominent European expert on retardation said something that was widely publicized. After touring the California facilities, he said, my God, you don't care for your mentally retarded children as well as we in Europe care for our cattle. The remark eventually caused them to dramatically restructure their approach. The heart and soul of the California system is now no longer the large state institutions. It's the regional center. Children's Hospital is one of the 13 centers in the state. Various programs are administered in neighborhoods all over Los Angeles County and the San Fernando Valley from here. Sub offices provide whatever services a family with a retarded child needs, be it a daycare center, a sheltered workshop, or medical care. The idea is to shift the care and training of the retarded to their own communities. In other words, to help the parents keep their children at home. Education for the retarded in California is as much a right as education for normal children and they're working toward the development of a public school program for every child, no matter the degree of retardation. This is a developmental center for handicapped minors. All these children are severely or profoundly retarded. This is an entirely a state-supported uh, program and provides tremendous relief to the parent in terms of daycare. Now, these children would be parallel to the children at Willowbrook, for instance. Oh, yes. All of these children would be in an institution for the retarded if we didn't have this kind of program for them. The fact is, in years past, I used to recommend institutional care myself for similar children. Now, New York is doing some of this, but here again, uh, we've realized that the community programs uh, should have top priority in terms of state dollars rather than last priority. And I think your priorities are mixed up in New York in terms of serving the retarded. Your top investment is in institutions. Our top investment is in the Department of Education and, and providing a program for the child while he's at home in terms of daycare. For example, these kids can go to school at age three years. So they start at very young, and that helps a great deal for parents. And when parents are actively uh, encouraged to keep their child at home, they do so because they know they can have the help of regional centers or public schools or the health department in terms of services, etc. For the mild to moderately retarded over school age, the regional center assists in the finding of employment in one of the many sheltered workshops in the area. In the workshop, you are seeing uh, less severely retarded persons, and the tremendous importance of this is that it gives the retarded person something to do during the daytime that gives them dignity, and they earn a little money with it, and they do something useful. They become a contributor to society instead of a drag on society. If you look around and see and just visualize all these people sitting home vegetating, here they are in the stream of life and doing their own thing. They're earning their own way. Dr. Koch told me time and again that the importance of prevention could not be overemphasized. Families with histories of genetic retardation are counseled not to have more children. And if there's a great probability that a pregnant woman is carrying a retarded child, she's tested. And if the fetus is found brain damaged, the center recommends a therapeutic abortion. The center also runs an extensive program of community education and prenatal care, the lack of which is a prime cause of retardation. There you are. There you are. That's a good girl. 
No, actually, uh, this child has Down syndrome, and uh, she's just as retarded as most of your patients at Willowbrook. And we're helping this family to keep her at home, and the mother is doing a beautiful job on her. Hey. And uh, the important thing is we're also providing genetic counseling to the family. This is an inherited form of Down syndrome. And we have uh, advised the mother that this is true, and frankly, have advised them not to have any more of their own children. How is this child being better serviced by being home rather than being in an institution like Willowbrook? Well, for example, she has access to one of the finest pediatric facilities in the world right here at Children's Hospital. If she were in a state hospital, she wouldn't have access to this kind of a facility. How about parental care? Is that making a difference in this child? Parental care makes a difference in every child, even the very retarded person. If you could get that across to people, that retarded people are more normal than they are abnormal. They have feelings, love, hate, etc., just like normal people. The only thing is, is they simply don't think as fast as the normal person. How old is she? She's two years old. Two years old? Right. What would be happening to her if she were in a place like Willowbrook? Uh, well, frankly, probably nothing. But Dr. Koch admits that for some retarded, perhaps one and a half to three percent, 24-hour residential care will always be necessary. And some California institutions, Fairview State and Orange County, for example, could be described in the most unflattering terms as smaller, cleaner Willowbrooks. But while Willowbrook has a large waiting list, the California institutions are being rapidly emptied. In five years, their total population is down from more than 14,000 to less than 10,000, and that number continues to go down. But even in the area of 24-hour residential care, they're moving to improve the quality of life. This is the Spastic Children's Foundation, a private organization that provides total care. It costs $14 a day for a child to live here. It costs the state of New York $21 a day to house a child in Willowbrook. And if the California parent can't afford the bill, the state contributes based on the family's ability to pay. This is an individualized program. Each child has a prescription for therapy, for academic training, for social adjustment, for feeding training, toilet training, every facet of his life that he needs help with. We sit down as a staff and we talk about his total needs, not just today, but where is he going to be in the future and how does his family relate to him because all of these things are a part of the whole with this child. See, we see these people as very important human beings. It's a five-day resident program, so the child actually goes home for two days? Right, because we want the family to remain the controlling factor in this child's life presently. We started this series as kind of an expose on conditions at Willowbrook and one of the things that really struck me as, as barbaric is the well, the toilet facilities, they're mm -hmm. so awful, mm -hmm. so filthy. Is this much more money to keep it this way? It isn't one cent more. It doesn't cost any more to be clean. It doesn't cost any more to be cheerful and bright and colorful. It's a matter of interest in providing, and seeing these children as important people. It's how much status you give to them. And uh, sometimes because they can't respond and say what they like and dislike, it's very easy for people to just sit back and think, well, this is good enough. But it isn't good enough. They deserve everything that you and I want out of life but they can't get it for themselves. Here, the toothbrushes have the children's names on them. In Willowbrook, there were no toothbrushes. Hi, Richard. How you doing? Uh, fine. I see you're copying a Van Gogh there. You better watch it. You're getting in trouble. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How long did you live in the state school before you came here? About 10 years. You like it better here? Yes. The thing that impressed me most on the California trip was an apartment where retarded people live in semi-independence. Irene, how do you like it living here? I love it. How come? I can do my own thing. I think the main difference between the approach of New York and that of California to the problem of caring for the mentally retarded is that they treat the retarded as people. We treat them as something less. We haven't given the people who run the New York program equal time to give their side of the story. Well, as Edward R. Murrow once said, on some stories there is no other side. Perhaps the governor can defend and explain away the budget cuts for the Department of Mental Hygiene, and perhaps Dr. Miller can explain and defend the filthy dehumanizing conditions we found in this and other buildings, but they won't do it on this program. What we found and documented here is a disgrace to all of us. This place isn't a school, it's a dark corner where we throw children who aren't pretty to look at. It's the big town's leper colony. How long have you been at Willowbrook? 18 years. How long were you given physical therapy in school? Five years. Are you still going to school? No. Why? I'm over... 
over age. You're too old? Yes. Would you like to go back to school? Yes, I do. What would you want to learn if you went back to school? You would not my read anymore. Learn how to read? Yeah. How, how is, how is it living on the ward that you live? Disgrace. Is it disgrace? Yes. Why? The, con the conditions are getting worse every time they cut the budget more and more. But even Bernard, with his tragically eloquent plea for help, doesn't really understand that what Willowbrook needs isn't more money. More money would certainly help. At least the kids would have clothes and they'd be cleaner than they are now, but they'd still basically be human vegetables in a detention camp. What we need is a new approach. We have to change the way we care for our mentally retarded. We ask for change, we demand change. What you've seen here just doesn't have to be this way. <laughs>